And before we go tonight, a helpful guide for those of us who may do a little binge watching during this holiday season. It is part of our year-end look at some of the most interesting work in different fields of the arts. Tonight, Jeffrey Brown showcases the best of TV and video. Trying to pin down the best TV of the year is becoming ever more difficult in this age of streaming and unlimited channels. But for a flavor of the year, we turn to a pair of critics who somehow try to keep up with it all. Eric Deggins of NPR and Jen Cheney of New York Magazine. She writes for its pop culture site, Vulture. And welcome to both of you. Eric, you start. I, one, one on your list was The Deuce from HBO. Tell us about that one. So this is an interesting series. It was done by David Simon, the creator of The Wire, and it's a detailed look at um, how the porn industry um, grew from becoming this sort of illegal uh, venture in the 1970s around Times Square to becoming a more legitimate business that was actually controlled by the mob. And James Franco gets a lot of attention for playing twins, actual based on actual people who are at the center of this. Uh, but I was really entranced by Maggie Gyllenhaal, who does an amazing job playing a streetwalker, uh, a prostitute, who decides uh, to change her fortunes by becoming a director in porn films, just as pornography is being transformed from something that's sold illegally under the counter in brown paper bags in certain bookstores to something that you can see in peep shows and something you can see in movie theaters uh, and, and actually buy uh, in, uh, openly in yeah. bookstores. Okay, let's take, a, let's take a look. We got a short clip here. So what are you offering? Next time I get my ass kicked, I can cry on your shoulder. What's the cut you take for that? Ain't gonna be no next time you come with me. Hey, man. I'm gonna have your back everywhere you go, baby. All right, Jed, you also had an HBO show, which was also on Eric's list, Big Little Lies, a, a big hit of the last year. Tell us why. What did you like about it? Well, I loved the series. It was my favorite of the whole year. And what I really liked about it was you had these amazing female actresses, Reese Witherspoon, Nicole Kidman, mm -hmm. uh, Shailene Woodley, Laura Dern, in this story that really put women front and center. It was about the politics between moms in Monterey, and it was sly and funny, but as you kept watching each episode, it, it got deeper and deeper into these and characters. And darker in some ways. And darker. I mean, there was a whole storyline about Nicole Kidman's character and a domestic violence situation that I thought was just a really uh, insightful and powerful look at that type of situation. Okay, we have a short clip from that one. Let's take a look. Wearing the dress I bought you. I know. My new dress, my new shoes, my new friend, Jane Chapman. Hi. So nice. She came to my rescue when I was trying to save young lives. It's a whole story. I'm going to kill Abigail. That's her son, Ziggy, right there, who's playing with Chloe and the boys. Can you believe that they're in first grade? I know. Take a lot of pictures. Hi, hey, Maddie. Nathan. On, Hi. Bonnie. And um, this is Jane. This is Bonnie. Nathan. Nice to meet you. Hi. Oh, I love this. Oh, thank you. I made it in Peru. Of course you did. All right, Eric, how about uh, one or two others briefly just uh, that, that struck you this year? Well, my top pick was actually another show that talks a lot about women pushing against uh, a patriarchy, The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, uh, an amazing translation of a classic novel that talks about a dystopian society where uh, a theocracy has taken control of the United States and has subjugated women and in particular has forced some women to become breeders for the leaders of that of that country. Um, Elizabeth Moss is amazing in it. Samira Wiley is amazing in it. And uh, it, 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 again, given the themes of the moment, given yeah. what we're talking about right now with sexual har harassment and assault, it's an amazing story about how women are pushing back uh, against uh, a patriarchy that takes over uh, America. Jen, you got another one? The Good Place, which is an NBC comedy. And I think it is great because it's both light, but it's also really intellectually rigorous mm -hmm. in that it deals with philosophy. It's about a woman who ends up in what she thinks is heaven, but has not been a very nice person on earth, mm -hmm. uh, and, but is trying to kind of keep maintaining the, the fact that she should be there. And there's a big twist at the end of the first season that I won't reveal for people who haven't seen it, but it changes your entire understanding of what the good place is. Mm -hmm. And in the second season, it continues to just surprise over and over again. You you know, one thing, Eric, that, uh, that that did get a lot of attention this year is on uh, Late Night and elsewhere is the coverage uh, of the of politics, right? Bringing politics into television. You told us before we started about um, the Jimmy Kimmel moment on on healthcare. 
Tell, tell us a little about why that struck you. Jimmy Kimmel was always viewed as someone who I thought sort of kept politics at an, at an arm's length in his comedy. Uh, but when oh, events uh, got to the point where he was touched personally, he had a, a son who had a health scare, and, uh, or not a health scare, health problems and, and multiple surgeries after he was born, and it brought him in contact with the health care system. He realized that some of the things that were happening in politics just weren't quite right, and he called it out in the show with detail, with humor. Uh, he was somebody who knew what he was talking about. Uh, he wasn't someone who was known for being a political firebrand, but when he decided to make his voice known, mm -hmm. he was very effective. If your baby is going to die, and it doesn't have to, it, it shouldn't matter how much money you make. I, I think that's something that, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or something else, we all agree on that, right? I mean, we do. Is there a moment for you uh, that where the country was kind of hit by stuff like that? Uh, to me, this was the year of, are you kidding me? Like, I just felt like all year long in politics and other ways on television, social media, I was constantly being surprised by what I was seeing. Uh -huh. And the great surprise uh, sort of in the pop cultural realm was the Oscars this year, where... Oh, the mistake. The mistake, where we yeah. saw La La Land we win and then all of a sudden, wait, no, they didn't. I'm sorry, no, there's a mistake. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight won. This is not a joke. Come this up. is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is, this is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. And even that had a political uh, kind of subtext to it because it was Moonlight, this film about an African-American gay man coming to terms with that and really living his life the way that he should be. Uh, and a lot of people were rooting for that. And so when La La Land seemingly won, it was like, oh. And then it was yeah. meaningful that, that Moonlight did. One, one more subject, Eric. We've talked about this, you know, year to year as, as things change. And this was uh, the evolution of television. This was the, the growth and power of Netflix, though, does continue, right? Is that the... Uh, tell us what you're seeing happening. Well, Netflix really stepped up this year. I mean, they had a major release of a TV series almost every weekend throughout the year. Something like three dozen new shows debuted over the year. They spent uh, uh, six billion in, in, uh, on new on original programming. They're projected to spend more next year. And you get the sense that in the media world, these uh, some of these mergers that we're seeing, AT&T buying Time Warner, Disney thinking about buying parts of 20th Century Fox, you wonder if part of their strategy is trying to compete with Netflix, which seems to be trying to offer everyone everything, from stand-up comedy to documentaries to movies to TV series to old TV series that you can watch as reruns. Uh, and, and can the rest of the media world compete with Netflix, or will Netflix get to the point where it becomes the Google of television? All right. Jen Cheney and Eric Dagens, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.